I gotta hop off, please. Thank you. You sit down over there. Thank you. Um, guys, welcome to, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 290 of the Spearhead Sundays podcast. Got a good one for you today. Uh, this woman went incredibly viral uh, on, on TikTok for making a video uh, like this, all right? Unpopular opinion, part four. I wish that I lived in the 1940s when going on a date was a super special romantic time, not... And she goes on to say a bunch of other things about the 1940s. Now, of course, this is an exclusively white woman video to make, or white dude video to make, really. Like, I feel like a, a woman of any colour really shouldn't be like, fuck, I'm, I wish I was in the 1940s. Like, could those women even speak back then? Were they allowed to say words? Probably not. I mean, I mean, I feel like that this woman would be hung in the street for wearing a, 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 a top this low cut in the 1940s. You know, I don't think she would have a good time. You know, this, this, this woman has some some nice titties, and I feel like she'd be persecuted for that. Um, but of course, this goes viral, and um, everyone says, "Yeah, maybe, maybe we can we can not." you know, pine after the period uh, where World War II was happening. You know, I don't think that was a very good time for anyone. <laughs> you know, I don't think that anyone in the 1940s was like, you know, this is, this is fucking sick. Everyone was like, oh man, I just watched my, my best friend die and I got six letters from six different relatives and, fr and, relatives and friends and they've also died. Meanwhile, my mum's in the bullet factory working her fingers to the fucking bone. I don't think I don't think the 1940s was exclusively people singing "Do Up Do Ah," and and you know going, "Oh, how good is not having Netflix?" I think they were like, "Oh man, my son and my father and my husband have all died in the war. I'm sad." At least there aren't any black people around. You know, that's what the 1940s was. <laughs> I don't think it's something that we should be pining about. Other than, look, the only people that, that really want the 1940s back are dudes that look like me and have the same haircut as me, but we have we differ on political opinions. Do you know what I mean? Like, like it's, it's, not, a, it's not a good time to, to look like me uh, and, and have a large social media platform or, or do a podcast with with red LED lights, you know, it looks it looks a little bit fucking straight arm salute, if you know what I mean. Um, but anyway, that goes crazy viral on TikTok because of all the things that I've said. Uh, and she released probably the worst apology I've ever seen, or not even really an apology, just the worst response to controversy I've really seen uh, on TikTok. And and uh, let's just give it a watch, right? Here's here's her response. Of course, I am a hundred percent against. Oh, for fuck's sake! TikTok sucks. All right. Okay, I did not say I wanted the 1940s to happen again. Absolutely not. With the atrocities of war, Nazism, yep. and racial prejudice, which Great. of course I am a hundred percent against, I would never Nailed want that it. time period to be repeated. I okay. Great. Now that is where she should have stopped. <laughs> That's all she had to say. That's actually a pretty good rebuttal. You know, like, oh, obviously there are a lot of bad things in 1940 and I don't want those to repeat. Obviously, right? And then she's going, I don't want to repeat of World War II or the rise of Nazism or the sexism or the racism of that era. And that's where she should have stopped. She could have, she could have ended it there. Maybe if I was her, I would have added on, I just like the fashion of the time. Not the fascism, the fashion. Or I just like the music, you know? Uh, but instead she says this. I simply stated that I would have liked to experience living back then <laughs> as me, Angela. <laughs> With my traditional values. I don't want the 1940s to repeat and I don't want the Nazis to come back. What I'm saying is I would have loved to be there when it happened. <laughs> <laughs> and she's going, look, I understand if a lot of you guys wouldn't want the return of World War II, racism and sexism uh, being blatant and, uh, and blackface being like a cool little hobby that you can have on the weekend. I'm just saying that I would have been stoked. <laughs> That's the fucking... I mean, look, I'll, I'll put it this way. This bitch looks like she's been educated in the 1940s. She really is living it. She's not cosplaying. You know what I mean? She, like, this type of airhead shit is really 1940s of her. Let's listen. It's a desire to be a busy state. 
stay-at-home mother of many children. My cooking skills and feminine style. You can still do that. You can do that right now. You're currently doing it. I don't think any bitch in 1940s would be would be having a fucking TikTok. If there was TikTok back in 1940s, women would get slapped for using it. Yeah, what are you what are you making TikToks on, Marie? It better be about recipes and, and housework. It better not be your opinion or your thoughts, see? Or you gotta you you gotta taste the back of my hand again. I think I would have enjoyed being a 1940s woman. Okay. <laughs> I think I would have enjoyed being a 1940s woman. Yeah, because you're the right color to be a 1940s woman. Did any woman in the 1940s have fun? Maybe maybe before 1942, there was a little bit of fun to have, but I'm pretty sure that after that, it was just like watching every man in your life either die or come home very fucking different. You know, I don't think the 1940s were very fun. They had, look, I'm not going to, everybody likes a nice homemade pie. I'm not going to say that, that that homemade cooking isn't good. I mean, I wouldn't turn down a nice baked pie, you know, but I don't, I don't think I'd be like, man, this apple pie is so good that I wish I could watch the Holocaust happen in real time. <laughs> You know what I mean? I think there were there were so many different ways where this woman could have addressed it. Because I totally get what she's saying. I get, you know, she she's a woman who likes traditional values and and then doesn't like to bring near black people. And she's the type of woman who that's a joke, obviously. I understand what she means. She's the type of woman that wants to be a stay-at-home mom, that wants to have lots of kids, uh, that that wants to just do nothing but get her back blown out and make nice little TikToks about homemade bread. Right? And that's fine. That's great. But but I think she needs to realize that she's currently living that. Do you know what I mean? You know, like, what's this? I don't understand this. Um, I get the whole traditional values thing of people who genuinely like filling, like, standard gender roles. I understand that. All right? I mean, if there's one thing that I hate, it's when a woman talks to me and has an opinion or free will. So I understand where they're coming from. But wh what I don't get is this, this idea of like, oh, I'm living my life this way and I would like every single other cunt on the planet to live it like that as well. Do, do we have to do that? I don't think so. All I'm saying is, I think that there, there are a little, there were a few different ways that she could have maybe worded that, which is like, um, oh, I, 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 I feel like um, uh, I would have fit in in the 1940s. See, even that sounds racist. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I think that sounds a, a little bit. How would, how would you word this? So if I was her, I would go, I would go. Um, Look, I think there are a lot of bad things about the 1940s, um, but you yeah, see, I can't think of a way to word it. Write, write down in the comments the best way that, that she could have addressed this, and we'll see if we can do better than her. I would have just gone if I was her, all right? Because as a man, I don't think that any, any man of any color, especially any color that isn't white, would, would have, have, a, have a good time in the 1940s. No man had a good time. It, even the rich people, their lives were kind of fucked. You know, all those people that got out of getting conscripted, they were like, okay, great, what are we going to do? Oh, I don't know, go to the supermarket and get scorned by all of the women that are there, you know? Like if you were a dude walking around the supermarket in the 1940s and you had two legs and two arms and, and you didn't have like a bullet hole in your face, people would look at you and go, you fucking coward. <laughs> You, they would, they would either, they would either go, you fucking coward, or hey, this is a whites only supermarket, get out of here. <laughs> it's not a good place to be. It's not a fun time period to go back to, and I feel like anyone with any understanding of history would understand that, especially like American history. Fuck, I love, I love uh, those traditional TikTok people because they're they're just constantly like. Um, just talking about how how I, I, idyllic and and perfect their traditional values life is, and don't get me wrong, there's a fuckload of benefits to living that if you are that type of person. I feel like the the trad wife aesthetic thing, like stay at home mom and breadwinner dad and lots of kids, that's an unbelievably fulfilling life if you're genuinely like attracted to it. 
But for a lot of other people, it's prison and it's hell. And for those trad people to go out into the workforce and shit, it's the, the same for them. It's like prison and hell for them. People need to understand that we're living in the best era there has ever been. And that really says a lot about how fucking horrific <laughs> the other fucking time periods were. People just romanticize, I was born in the wrong generation. Cunts have been saying that since the dawn of time. You can look at fucking ancient Greek teens, right? I was born in the wrong generation. Back back in back in the day, those people had it right. Meanwhile, those people were like hanging black people from trees if they looked at a white woman <laughs> and, and fucking and dying in a trench. Not of of being killed by the war, but just of ah, uh, I wore the wrong boots. Fuck. I guess I'm gonna die. Oh, yeah, my tickets are on sale, guys. Loosebeers.com, uh, uh, brace yourself, is uh, on sale now. Grab your tickets. Uh, I am doing 23 shows in Melbourne. Yes, that sounds like a lot of shows, but they are small venues. It's actually the same venue the Prince Philip clip happened, uh, so that's a little bit n nostalgic for you guys. I can't wait to do those shows. I can't wait to, to get a bunch of clips, and I can't wait to meet you guys after the show. Uh, for people outside of Victoria, outside of Melbourne, I don't have anything booked in outside of Melbourne and I don't have really any plans to book any shows. I have uh, tentatively booked in my surgery for June. So uh, to avoid what happened to me last year, I am going to do these shows in Melbourne and then I'm going to see how I feel because 23 shows, that's every single night other than Mondays for a full month. That's a fuckload of shows. So I'm not going to commit myself to a tour straight after that and then walk into a fucking, the biggest surgery of my life. You know, I, I, I want to go into this surgery as healthy as possible. So I don't want to do this tour until I, I know how I feel after the Melbourne shows. So I don't know if I'm going to tour before June uh, and I don't know if I'm going to do a tour this year at all. Um, I'm thinking like, Best case scenario, it happens before June. Second best case scenario, after I recover, it happens in September or October. Although that's really fucking, yeah, I don't know. I I don't know, and I'm not, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do what I did last year and fucking book in my whole fucking year and ignore the fact that I'm that I'm a sick man recovering from a lot of shit. So uh, it's just Melbourne for now. That might be frustrating, but I. I fucking can promise you as soon as I'm done with this health shit, I'm going to every corner of the fucking globe where I can sell tickets. Now, now I, I know a lot of people that are living in, in, in Namibia might have heard that and gone, does this mean world tour? I don't know how to do a Namibian accent. But I do know how to say Namibian, so you got to give me some points for that. Uh, that doesn't mean world tour. That means, may, that means every fucking where in, in Australia and then maybe you... And then definitely UK, but but by UK I probably mean like a lot of England and maybe Scotland and maybe like one in Ireland and you can catch the fucking train there if if you live in Nova Scotia or where, I don't even know that's probably not even part of the UK but you know it's Europe so you can probably catch a train and then and then and then if I can get a, a visa to a green card to the US there, but that's a big ask. <laughs> Especially after me using those AI voice generators to, to make their, their president say slurs. Fuck, uh, let's be real, guys. Let's be real for a moment, and, and I want everyone to, to acknowledge something that's very true of me and my career. Every now and then, I'm going to do, I'm going to do and I'm going to make the funniest thing I've ever made and it's going to get like the least amount of views I've ever gotten. <laughs> and that's that. And every now and then I'm going to do the funniest thing that I've ever done. And it's going to fucking skyrocket and hit mainstream news, everything like that. That's the, the vaccine video. That's the Marxism rally. That's the Prince Philip bit. But even more often than that, I'm going to do 
the by far the funniest thing, like funnier than those three things combined, and it's going to get a real, a real, a real solid fifteen thousand views. <laughs> And that was, and that was a couple of days ago when I made that AI president arguing on Discord while playing Minecraft about whether or not to buy tickets to my show. Unbelievably niche content. Like, un, like the only way I could make that more niche would be if I had them playing fucking Stardew Valley instead. You know what I mean? Or, or using Ventrilo instead of Discord. That's the only way I could get more niche than that. Or I could make them, you know, talk about a, 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 a lesser known comedian, you know? <laughs> so... <clears throat> Dude, that AI voice thing, people are going, how did you make this? Oh my God, this is amazing. It's the easiest shit ever. These AI voice generators are fucking scary. I feel like if you show that to any person over 50, they'd be like, oh my God, Donald Trump and Obama and Biden play video games together. And they're going to see a comedian, Louis Spears, like, dude, you show that to anyone. I showed that shit to my mom and she was like, how, how much did this cost you to make? Like, surely this would have cost you like thousands of dollars to employ these voice impressionists or, or or generate this voice bro it cost me fucking five dollars to download to not even download anything it was a website i can't even remember what the website was called right i, I pay five bucks this is, it's the most irresponsible fucking technology ever and i love it because that's what the internet is supposed to be the internet started off as the the military, right, in, in, in essentially inventing email. And they were like, oh, yeah, this might be like the most revolutionary piece of uh, technology that's ever been created in the history of humankind. Let's just fucking give it to everyone. <laughs> <laughs> and that's and that's what the internet is all about. From its literally from its founding is like, oh, this uh this cool little tool that lets you send a letter really fast um is gonna change the fucking course of human history and, and, and is gonna end in like fifteen year old girls cutting their arms because they, they don't look like an Instagram filter. Let's just put it out for free, see what happens. <laughs> and then and then it evolved into blogs. Of like uh, just some dude going, yeah, so um, if you ever needed to like kill a man, uh, here's six ways you could do it. And that'd be a little blog, you know. Or, um, yeah, so uh, a lot of people really want to make improvised explosive devices. Well, uh, you know, here's a list of ingredients, uh, how to make it, and also where to put it for maximum casualties. And that was just some guy's blog. And that guy was just like some autistic savant who was like, yeah, but surely people reading this are just like interested in, in how to do it, just like me, but they wouldn't actually do it. And that's the internet. And that's this AI tool of like, hey, this guy, just a couple of nerds one day were like, oh, well, there's, there's like a lot of um, voice recordings of Joe Rogan out there. I'm sure if we could just grab like a couple hours of that and upload it in this thing and do a bit of coding and type this and type that and we could uh, just synthesize his voice. And then a bunch of people were like, we could use this to start a revolution. We could use this to get, um, to get people killed. We could use this to, to, to make like a, a leader of a country call for the murder of another politician, put it out there on TikTok, have it done in four hours, and uh, then just pretend we didn't do it. And that's, the, that's what the internet is about. It's about creating something because you're a, you're a, a little nerd in your bedroom putting it out there into the world and, and, and accidentally causing a revolution like Facebook, you know, Oh, cool. We can make little community groups. We can make little community groups. So people who are, who are interested in sewing can like get into a group and look what I sew today. And I've, would you guys recommend this sewing machine? And, and then, and then someone else in some country with, with a 16 syllable name you've never heard of in your fucking life creates a, a Facebook group and starts posting political memes in there oops we caused a, a revolution and a genocide <laughs> because they've got they've got marie moderating it and she doesn't speak the language or understand the culture she's like oh i don't know what they're saying but i'm seeing a lot of knife emojis <laughs> maybe we should ban the knife emoji 
so anyway, what I'm trying to say is uh, loosebeers.com. I'm doing shows in Melbourne, and uh, you never know what will happen. Uh, it's it's going to be good. It's going to be fun. I'm looking forward to them. And, uh, yeah, man, this, this, uh, it's, it's going to be sweet. It's going to be the – like uh, I haven't done the full run since – yeah, since the Prince Philip thing. And that was like kind of weird because it was during COVID. So this is going to be fun. It's going to be really good. And uh, I want to see their tickets are on sale now. I was saying, yes, it's a lot of shows, but uh, small. So if you want a weekend show, especially buy them now, organize your friends, buy them now, because those will sell out first. And it's like, yes, it's a lot of shows, a lot of events, but it's actually not that many total tickets. And because there are lots of different opportunities to see me, they sell faster because you're not trying to sell you know, fucking 500 tickets on a Friday, you're instead spreading that over a full week uh, and people are available. So it actually sells quicker, even though it looks like, I know your fucking brain goes, oh, we, 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 we shut the fuck up and get them now, all right? Or you'll regret it. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah, the, the AI voices thing is is one of the funniest things I've ever done. And, and every now and then I'm going to do that and it's going to get fuck all views. And that's fine. It amuses me. Um. And that was that. I think we're going to do a few more. Let me know who, who, who else should I synthesize. I was thinking, obviously, the, the obvious one is the Queen and Prince Philip. I'm going to do that. Uh, but, uh, yeah, give me some uh, some other suggestions. I mean, you know, I was actually thinking that on, a, on, on like a real, oh, this is a great idea type thing, is this voice synthesizer would be a great option for me when I can't speak. Because there was a moment, it was about, I reckon, three weeks where my where after the surgery, my brain was fine, but my face was fucked. So I couldn't speak, but I could write. I reckon I could make some videos using this AI thing. Or maybe I should learn from my mistakes and just fucking be a guy who's recovering from a traumatic surgery. But you know me, hustle, grind, the work never stops. Um, yes, there is a dress code for the shows, and that is... Um, a little bit slutty. Now, I don't want, I don't want you to whore it up, okay? Because as 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 we know, all right, I'm no whore, I'm not a slut, but I am a little bit slutty, and that's that's all I, I, that's all about just making little changes, right? It's putting on a, it's putting on a regular outfit, but wearing too many rings, you know? Like, look, I could have st- done this podcast rocked up and just worn a t-shirt and pants and I am wearing a t-shirt and pants but instead I've got a little I've got a little choker chain all right it's it's not whorish but it is a little bit slutty and that's that is the dress code all right boys and girls well ladies and gentlemen okay if you're a, if you're a boy and a girl you wear wear a baseball cap and a polo some shorts I don't know what you kids wear you know what it's at a bar don't worry about it ladies and gentlemen it's all about just adding a little bit of slutty energy into your outfit, okay? You don't have to be a total fucking whore. You just have to slut it up a little bit, and I'm happy, okay? Um, <clears throat> my dog uh, is uh, ha- has been doing my head in, okay? Because she uh, – <laughs> we've got her he, – uh, I'll tell you what happened. So we adopted her and she was very anxious. She came from a very bad breeder, bad history. She was malnourished, neglected, all of that type of stuff. Uh, and we were kind of the perfect home for us because for her because we work from home, all this kind of stuff, and we're, we're full of love, right? So we bring her in and uh, she started doing really, really well. Uh, but they told us she's scared of the dark. Uh, and we were like, oh, that's that's no good. But no worries, we just won't leave her in a dark room and we'll only turn the lights off when it's time to go to sleep. And that was fine. Uh, and then one day we have cats uh, and a laser pointer was played with. Now I know this, but most people do not. You should never ever play with a laser pointer with a dog. Uh, and you also kind of shouldn't with cats. Cats are more resistant to this, but you shouldn't really with cats because it's it's a thing they can't catch and that's frustrating. Uh, or it can give them a, a debilitating mental illness like I did my dog. Uh, but dogs, you should never, ever play with any type of lights or shadows with the dog because they get this thing that is literally called laser pointer syndrome. Uh, and if you show a dog, hey, look, lights and reflections and shadows are real living things that can chase you or react to you chasing them, it 
completely splits their fucking brain and changes how they view the world in a very negative way. And it gives them a mental illness called laser pointer syndrome, which she uh, got from literally one time where a laser pointer was played with, not even with her. She was in the room it was playing with the cats, right? Uh, and once. And ever since then, she scans every room that she's in looking for shadows. She reacts to when the trees blow in the wind and the sun goes through them and the sun shines through the window and hits the floor and moves. She sees it and she runs away. And it was something that every time the more she saw it, the more she saw it. So it became this like vicious loop of after the laser pointer, she was like, oh fuck, I didn't know those things were real. And then she started seeing shadows everywhere. It's like she became some fucking paranoid schizophrenic thing where if I had turned a light on, she would jump because the lights would change. She go, fuck, what did, what, what happened? What did that do? Every time, one time my, uh, I was walking down a hallway and I accidentally turned my phone torch on and because my arm was moving, the light went from the, the wall to the floor to the wall to the roof and she fucking freaked out, almost fell over, had like this freakish panic attack of, oh my God, I just got attacked by this thing that I can't touch, that I can't scare away, that is always chasing me, that is always there. She would walk into a room and it didn't matter what she was doing, if she was relaxing, if she was eating food, she would look at the roof because uh, near the roof there were shadows near all the lights and it became this, this thing that was like fucking destroying her quality of life and the more she saw it, the more she saw it and it got worse and worse and worse and worse until it got to a point where she stopped eating food because... Every time she was in a room, obviously, you know, lights and shadows and things going through the window and everything, she was too scared to eat food. And we tried rewarding her when she didn't do it. We tried minimizing shadows. We tried fucking everything. And when it got to a point where she wasn't eating food, I was like, for fuck's sake, take her to the vet. The vet goes, oh, it's a really common problem with dogs who have been played with laser pointers. It's laser pointer syndrome. And I go, I knew that, but not everyone does. Uh, and it happened to her. And, uh, yeah, just fucking, it ruined my dog, man. She went from this like happy, you know, s kind of anxious, sometimes dog because of her history into this like paranoid, like, fuck, they're out to get me. It's like she had paranoid schizophrenia, like, fuck, they're, they're trying to get me. Like every time we walked into a room and I walked past the light, she'd be like, ah, what the fuck? She would like jump and always anxious and like always on high alert. And, uh, she stopped eating food because she was so scared of the things that were always there, that were always chasing her, that was always going to get her. So we take her to the vet and they put her on fucking Prozac. And I was really on the fence about it. I was like, I don't know about fucking giving my dog pills, but then she stopped eating food. So I was like, oh, fuck, I'll try it. And uh, it's at week two and she has just, she's been great. She's back to her normal self. She's not barking at things that she can't see. She's not running away. She's... Uh, She's almost stopped looking at the roof. And that's a huge thing that she would do all the fucking time is just constantly be staring at the roof. And, you know, even now she's like beautiful, sitting down, asleep on the floor. Um, she's great. And, uh, <clears throat> yeah, it, it's just so much better. I'm very um, grateful. And I, I think also like just being around me, I think made her anxiety worse because I, I was obviously going through fucking heaps for a long time when she got when she got adopted and everything, um, and uh, yeah, now she's she's happy, which is great because before she just could not be in this room because obviously there's so many lights that that turn on and turn off and um, everything like that. Uh, but you know, I just turned the light off and she just didn't react, so it's it's great. So. Uh, uh, you know, uh, seeing the reaction in her, I'm thinking about having having a few. Do you know what, do you know what I mean? Put it, rub them in peanut butter. She eats them straight away like lollies. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it took her like two weeks, and she's she's uh, not changed at all. She like from what I mean from before she got the syndrome. She's just like a normal dog now, the normal dog that she was. It's like returned her to who she was. Um, I'm kind of thinking that after a couple of months. Maybe we'll take her off the Prozac 
and see, because maybe she just needed like a break from the fuck, the checking. Um, we might take her off after she's like been on it and been cured for a while and see how she reacts. Um, and if she gets worse, we'll put it back on it. But um, yeah, I don't know. It's just a, just a funny uh, thing that happened. Or well, not funny because it's fucking horrible, but uh, I'm glad she's okay. So yeah, look that, uh, never use a fucking laser pointer with your dog ever. Even if you have cats, never use one in the same room as any dog ever. Because literally, man, it was once. And when I saw it happening, I was like, hey, let's stop doing that. That's not good for a dog because I knew because I've had dogs my whole life. Uh, and that, that's all it took. And it fucking destroyed her mental health and it got worse and worse and worse and worse for like, I don't know, six months after that until she stopped eating food because she was so worried about reflections. <clears throat> you guys ever get intrusive thoughts? You know, I mean, I've... Uh, I got a real funny one the other day. I don't get them very often, but when I do, um, I shock myself. You know, like you're waiting at a train station and, and there's a, there's an old man waiting on the station with you and your brain goes, gee, it sure would be bad if uh, somebody pushed that man in front of the tracks. And you're like, what did you say? And the, your brain goes, push him in front of the tracks. You're like, no, that'd be horrible. And your brain's like, good, just checking. You know, you're, you're, at, a, you're at a wonderful, idyllic um nature reserve looking over a beautiful waterfall and your brain's like jump and you're like where the where the fuck did that come from <laughs> you know it's almost like you're thinking about what you should absolutely not do but your brain gets a little bit confused and goes do it <laughs> and that's where murderers come from because i think some people you know those intrusive thoughts actually actually become persistent suggestions and who from guys who start who go, you know what you make it you've been making a lot of sense recently uh, that hasn't happened to me but man i had a real good one that that made me laugh because mine come in you know what mine are like mine are like visions mine are like prophecy i don't have the intrusive thought of that that's just like do this i i have the intrusive vision i after saying that i've just i've just diagnosed myself with with um, schizophrenia because I just, I have visions. All right. I'm telling you, man, I would never act on them, but they're fun to envision. Fucking shit cat wants to come in, wants to go out. You suck. Um, my vision, right? So I'm at this cafe. Okay. This is where all my thoughts come from. And there's this little boy and He's got an English accent and he's a nerdy little kid, cute kid, but quite nerdy with his family. And I just, I just hear this and it, it triggers the most vivid vision I've ever had in my life. It was like, uh, I felt like how the prophets must have felt when God was speaking to them and showing them what they must do. This kid goes, daddy, daddy, when I... When I have my birthday, for my birthday next week, can I have a chessboard? And I instantly had this this vivid vision, this beautiful vision of me standing up and and grabbing the kid by the back of his polo shirt, lifting him up and taking him to the to the the public bathroom and then just stuffing his head in the toilet and then flushing it, giving him a swirl and go, "You fucking nerd! No one wants a chess set for their birthday. You fucking nerd!" Like in front of his dad, "You're raising a nerd. You got a fucking nerd son." Just swirling him and I come. He comes up, let him breathe. I'm not a murderer. He's gasping, crying, oh, "Daddy!" And I put it back in and I flush. He goes, "You fucking nerd!" and then i give him back to the dad and they and they have and they have breakfast and in and in my vision there were no consequences everyone was just like oh yeah that's what he gets for asking for a chessboard for for his birthday too loud in a public space so uh guys if you want to support the show on patreon you can do so uh because i, I want to get to 500 patrons i'm up to 380 and i reckon we can bump that up to 500 before my surgery that would be fucking amazing if you, if you sign up to the patreon you get uh, an extra uh episode uh, of the podcast every single sunday it also comes out early for you uh when i film them early i'm filming this one on a sunday but you know what i wasn't feeling it i wasn't feeling it <clears throat> not the best week all right i 
Uh, so if you want to uh, support the show, uh, check it out on Patreon. You get a bunch of benefits. There's a Discord and there's like a giant backlog now of Patreon exclusive episodes where I get a little bit fucking naughty. Um, I actually have a bunch of guest episodes of Spearhead Sundays that I'm going to chuck up really early because I don't know when I'm going to drop these. I've got one uh, uh, one with Frenchie and one with Greeley and uh, one with a with a huge OnlyFans girl as well, actually, that uh, is is going to be coming out soon. But I don't know when, so I think I'm just going to put them up now on uh, on Patreon and you guys have them early. So uh, plus the big backlog. Get it, get it, and it really, really does support me, especially when I can't tour like I want to and I had all the time off and we're just getting the views uh, back up. It, uh, it's it's fucking essential to my entire business is patreon is how i'm literally paying the bills right now so if you want to jump on there it it would uh, help me so much more than it has ever helped me before so if uh, you're thinking of doing it now's the time i would love to get to 500 that would change my fucking life right now and uh, i'd really appreciate it and it would enable me to do so much more so yeah check that out and uh and and don't probably don't give kids swirlies um Probably not a good idea. Um, <clears throat> but uh, I do have some emails here, okay? Uh, we've got, uh, if you want to send an email to the show, we're podcast at loosebeers.com. Send us an email. If you need some life advice, if you have a funny story for me, anything you like, shoot it through to podcast at loosebeers.com. L E W spears.com. All right, here we go. We've got dumped by a fundamentalist Christian for being. Too horny. Uh, hey, Lewis, a big UK fan. Uh, normally, I don't have anything interesting to talk about, but last week, a great story unraveled around me and I just had to share. See, this is great. If you don't have a good story, I know that you've heard a good story and I would love those too because we love a bit of goss on Spearhead Sundays. It's a little bit slutty. It's a little bit fun. It's great. So a good female friend of mine has previously been in a relationship of about two years with a fairly nice guy, but after going to university, they had been trying long-term. Over the few months of doing this, she started to fall in love with a new boy I'll call John. Uh, I don't get it. They'd been in a relationship for two years. Uh, they've been trying long-term. Uh, okay, so the long-term, so, okay, that's unnecessary information. We're talking about a new relationship. Uh, she fell in love with a new boy, John. John is very religious, traditional Christian who has never had sex, virgin, and to my knowledge, never even seen a woman naked in that context. Damn. Uh, it got to a point last week where the girl decided to break up with her boyfriend to be with John instead. See, girls want what they can't have. See, that if there's one thing that a woman fucking loves, it's a man of limitation. The... Amount of times, like, this is this is this is why uh, when dudes get girlfriends, they start to notice that they're getting hit on a lot, and it's because they have put up this wall. And this is without even telling people that they have girlfriends. It's just the energy that men who are taken, like faithful men, put out into the world, which is, I don't really want you. You're nice, but I don't need you. And women pick up on that and it gets interpreted as extreme confidence and they fucking love it. And that's when dudes start going, man, I never got hit on in my life or girls never flirted with me until I got a girlfriend. What's going on? And it's because they smell that you're not fucking desperate and they love it, right? Um, anyway. After about a week, everything seemed to be going well until a few days ago, she messaged me very upset. Apparently her and John had now broken up. I asked her why and she explained that for the first time ever, they were sharing a bed. Oh, I hope they were leaving room for Jesus. Obviously with John's religion, she didn't expect anything sexual. As he went to brush his teeth, she got into bed. John came back into the room and freaked the fuck out after seeing she was naked. They had a huge argument, which ended in John screaming, it's against my morals and kicking her out. Oh man, kicking a woman out at nighttime to go find her own way home. That's, that's not very Jesus-like of you. Wasn't he out there washing the feet of whores? Now this girl has gone from a happy long-term relationship to single and embarrassed. See, I'm telling you, dude, there's something about a man of limitation. 
You know for sure back in the day, Unix were getting a lot of pussy they couldn't properly interact with. Um, now this girl has gone from a happy long-term relationship to single and embarrassed, which is on one hand sad to see, but also very funny given the circumstances. This is Beard Sunday's listener. Oh, that's horrible. That's, oh, that's terrible, Marie. Lewis is going to love hearing about this. Um, she's thinking of talking to her ex-boyfriend and trying to pick up where she left off, but I said that's a bad idea. What do you think? I think that she's an idiot for getting naked in the bed. Like, um, yeah, I think that's... Uh, I think that the guy is stupid for letting her in in the bed. That's That's just like... That's like an alcoholic going, oh, I'm not going to drink, but pour me a glass. Oh, I don't want any heroin, but fill up the needle just in case. You know? Like, hey, have you got any spoons and lighters around here? I don't want to do any drugs. <laughs> That's a little bit silly. But it is it is also her fault for pushing the boundary that far. And Although maybe she's a naked sleeper. Maybe she's got, like, some giant titties like, that, if left constrained by a T-shirt, would just get fucking tangled up, you know? I don't know, but I think that that's that, that. Yeah, I think that's her fault for getting naked, and she is, man. She is. Yeah, she's. I think that anyone, if you want to be celibate, celibate until marriage, like more power to you. That's like a probably an amazing thing to do. Maybe a bad thing to do. It depends on the type of person you are. It's an amazing thing to do if you genuinely want to do it. It's a horrible thing to do because of social pressure. I think. Um, it's like the tradi traditional roles thing. It's like if you genuinely want to do that, then that's fucking amazing and that will probably really, really work for you. But if you're doing it because of religion, because your parents did it, because of outside pressures, you're going to feel like a prisoner in the life that you built for yourself, which is just going to lead to that life exploding, right? Uh, so if, if you're with someone who is genuinely choosing to be celibate and you're not, you know, you can't really do that. It it doesn't really work. Like I'm, I don't, I don't drink. Neither does jazz, and that works really well for us. I think it would be not bad, but just kind of like uh, off balance if one of us did and one of us didn't. Because uh, because I 'cause I've been with girls uh, who drank and I didn't, and it you know it's not it's not bad, but it's just it's just like uh, it's unnecessary friction, and 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 it invites like oh, well, you don't and I do, so that means you're judging me. And even though I'm genuinely not, those feelings can get in the way. Um, so, yeah, I think she's silly. She's definitely silly for leaving, like, a seemingly good long-term relationship to go and try and start one with a dude that she can never fuck. See, she got tricked by a man of limitation. This is what I mean. This is what I mean, fellas. Self-discipline, it's one of the best things you can do for your life because it, it not only does it move you forward in life it attracts people to you because people see this dude like fucking going no i won't do that because i understand that i'm serving a higher purpose and that higher purpose is god or a goal or you know a future version of myself or whatever the fuck it may be you know building a time machine to go back into the 1940s to definitely not be racist <laughs> yeah she's silly um but yeah, that's where I'm going to end it there, guys. Thank you very much for listening. Uh, that was the podcast. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, tune in next Sunday or jump over to Patreon and uh, you will get a uh, extended bonus uh, episode full of never-before-seen content uh, for only five bucks a month and you get access to so many benefits. Grab tickets to my show. I will see you there, loosespears.com. Brace yourself. Uh, my best title yet. And uh, yeah, thank you for listening. I will talk to you next Sunday. I hope you have a shit one. Bye.